He was the best leader on that team. He, I would argue that he did more to change Michigan football in the last couple of years than as much as any player they had. Now, I've known for a long time about the ball player, but over the last two months, I learned about the dude, the dedication. I think the Florida game spoke to your resilience, and that's why you're coming here, man. You're a dog competitor. We're going to kick a lot of ass together. With the second pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select Jaden Daniels, yeah! quarterback, LSU. Welcome on in Washington Commanders faithful. I got a question. I have a legit question for you guys. How, how does it feel that you completely dominated this NFL draft? I, I, there are some discrepancies, not discrepancies, but I would have loved a tackle at some point, maybe early, but gosh darn it. When you look at what you guys have done in this draft, there's some beautiful things on the up and up for you guys. And, and there's a thing that's going around. Let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Jaden Daniels, quarterback LSU, Heisman winner, goes over 3,800 yards passing with 40 touchdowns, only four interceptions, and then rushing the ball, he gives us 10 rushing touchdowns with over 1,100 yards rushing. This kid is an absolute dynamic athlete. I think if there's any fantasy guys out there that are picking at the number one spot, you do have a lot of legitimate research that you need to do. You need to legitimately think about if you want to pick Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels because of the rushing ability. That's a fantasy point. We're off of that. Something that I've been seeing very uh, consistently is his size. And they were, are there, are, everyone is very quick and immediate to create the, the comparison of, you know, RG3, he won the Heisman, smaller, gets hurt, blah, 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 gets ran out of Washington. I think there is a clear cut difference with Jaden Daniels. I think Jaden is 100% a better passer than RG3, and he is not a rushing quarterback. In my personal opinion, I think he is a polished quarterback that has a high ability to run the ball, and he's very effective at running the ball. And another thing with RG3's injury, the Washington Redskins at the time, they did not do a great job at nursing it. And I think he played. It was like Pelodi Nada. I think it was a Ravens game. It was like a really gross, like he like flipped in the, the, the body of a defensive tackle, hit the knee in a certain way, and it was just banged up. And of course, he runs rookie of the year. Uh, he does a lot of great things. And I just think he was hobbling the entire time as he was doing successful and great things. And I just think if they were smarter about it, we wouldn't have this comparison. But Jaden Daniels, I don't think there's going to be any freak injury. And of course, that's a stupid thing to really say, but I don't think we're going to have any injury concerns. So let that illuminate and go out of your head. Terry McLaurin, right? Scary Terry officially has the best quarterback he's ever had while he's been in the National Football League. And we're about to see Jahan Dotson really pop off. You have Cliff Kingsbury as your offensive coordinator. Watch to see a lot of beautiful things happening in this offense. You guys did a lot of great things of helping out your offense with just getting in this great player in Jaden Daniels. But let's move on. Jerzon Newton. Guys, I like Byron Murphy a lot. Jerzon Newton, if you listen to what people are saying, they're saying he was the best defensive player in this draft. Now, a lot of people love Jerzon Newton. Let me know what you think of Jerzon Newton and how ecstatic are you? You see all these things to it. I mean, of course, you guys lie. I don't mean to laugh. You lost Montez Sweat. And you lost your, your former number two overall player in Chase Young. And believe me, I keep forgetting his name. That's how forgettable he is. I keep forgetting Chase Young's name. This kid is an absolute beast. He's the dynamo. He is very athletic. He has very heavy hands. He can push people around with one hand. And he can move up and down the defensive line. He can give you some five tech. He can give you some three. Hey, have him go outside outside a little bit. I think he's done some nine as well. So he's a guy that you're going to be able to move up and down. The defensive line, you have Jonathan Allen still in the building. He's going to be able to show him the robes, get him acclimated to the NFL. And hopefully, you know, you saw Jonathan Allen. He really wants to stay, A, in Washington, and B, he wants to win. So I believe Jaden Daniels is going to be doing great things to help your veterans want to stay in Washington. Because at, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Do your successful, very elite players on your team want to stay in the organization? And so I think what... Adam Peters has done. Of course, Dan Quinn is telling him, go get me Jerzon Newton because that's where it all starts. You know, you're in the NFC East. 
you have what the Eagles are doing within their offensive line and what the Cowboys are doing with their offensive line, going get the players that they got. And, you know, the Giants, they're just going to be the Giants. You guys are clearly building a roster to best fit for the NFC East. You guys finished last two years in a row. That's going to change. That That's not going to be the same. And then you guys get a carbon cutout of, of you know, I'm a Bengals fan, of, of Dax Hill with Mike, um, it's hard to say his name, Sorin, Sainrit still, uh, Michigan weapon. Let's just call him that. He's probably going to play slot for you guys. He might play some high safety. He has the capabilities of playing outside corner. So let's just wait and see. He's going to be a guy that you could put all over the field. I think he's going to be your nickel. I'm sure he's going to be your nickel. And he's not afraid to put his nose into any ball carrier. He's not afraid to take on any tight ends in the blocking game. He's not afraid to take on any tackles in the blocking game. He is a magnet to the ball as well. I think he is. Uh, this is another guy. Legit. Jerzon Newton and Mike, these are players who the voices that I respect and or just want to listen to, they said these are the best defensive players in the draft. You heard those quotes. And, and I just think, all in all, this is a new regime. When you get a new quarterback, you get a new head coach, you have a new author, a new offensive coordinator and a Cliff Kingsbury, everything is just new. So we can't keep comparing everything to the past. You have a new freaking owner, guys. So get away. You have a new name. There's a new name as opposed to when RG3 was in the building. So stop making the comparisons to what is old. Stop doing it. This is a new team, new franchise. Everything is new. Stay on what the new track is. And then the player that I wanted, the player that I felt like I needed on my team was 100% Kansas State tight end Ben Snot. Uh, this kid, when I see him, I can't not see Gronk. I can't not see Gronk. Rob Gronkowski, and I'm sorry what you all think. He is the greatest tight end that ever played the game. I understand what Travis Kelsey has done and what he is doing. There ain't it's no one touching Gronk. And I think you guys have something very big, something very special with Ben Snot. Big old target, big man, bohemian of a man, can play in the snow. So, you know, those cold games aren't going to bother him whatsoever. 6'4", 250, did some great things at the combine, looked really fluid, looked very loose. And I think he was a 4'6 dude, too. If, I, if my memory serves me correctly, he was a 4'6 guy. And you better send the army. Because if you think one linebacker is going to bring him down, if you think one safety is going to bring him down, if you think any of those, you know, if you think Trevon Diggs is going to bring down Ben Sinat, then you're an actual idiot. If you actually think that Trevon Diggs is going to be able to one-on-one -on -one play with Ben Sinat in the, in the form of, of course, you can guard him, but bringing him down, you better send your troops. There is going to be, there are very few players in the National Football League that are able to bring Ben Sinat down one-on-one. -on -one. That's why I wanted him in Cincinnati, but he's in Washington. And so that is a beautiful acquisition. He can block, he can run, he can catch anything. He is beautiful in the red zone. He is a big, fat target. You're going to have, you have, a, you know, you have Jahan Dotson, a smaller dude, Scary Terry, a smaller dude. And I wanted you guys to... Look at tight end. You guys got rid of, you know, Logan that's been there for so many years and, and seasons. And so bringing Vince not in, I think he is going to be an electrifying player off rip. Of course, he has Zach Ertz to also learn from. And I know Logan Thomas retired, but that's just what I, that's how I preface it and getting rid of him. But yeah, you get, he has Zach Ertz to learn from for a, a season or two, however long Zach Ertz has. And so I love the addition of Ben Sinai. And then you guys go to TCU and bring in Brandon Coleman, a 6'6", 320 pound, probably 6'5", 6'6", a little bit heavy, maybe 6'4", and a quarter, honestly. Um, after releasing Charles Leno Jr., I really like this addition as well. I, he is an inside guy. I think when you guys need to revamp the offensive line, it is work. It is about going inside out. And so it's just a matter of time for him to get acclimated into the NFL and get things right. I think he has great arm length. I think he shows great uh, quickness and he's very smooth in his pass sets, uh, long arms, as I said, and he changes directions really well. And he's a, he's a, he's one of those tough guys. So in a zone, heavy schemes, I think he is going to be beautifully uh, acclimated. And then you guys have a lucky charm. You guys have, may I say, a lottery, you know, boom bust guy. If you have an opportunity to pick up a player that is of the bloodline of the McCaffreys, you got a shot to get a dude, right? So you have Daddy McCaffrey, you have Christian McCaffrey, and you have little brother Luke McCaffrey, started off his career as a quarterback. Then 
beautifully transitions to the wide receiver position to where there is an offset to where you have Terry's, Terry McLaurin, John Dodson, and then a McCaffrey in the slot. So there's a lot of good things that are happening within this building. Guys, I am not prefacing this lightly. I think you guys are on your way up. Legit. I think you guys have a legitimate shot to do some big things. Maybe not in year one, right? I think you guys are going to be beating teams that you shouldn't be beating. I think you guys are going to lose games that you should be winning. This is going to be a learning curve. Dan Quinn's learning how to be head coach this year. Uh, Mr. Mr. Cliff Kingsbury, he has to implement his entire offense to this. All of these offensive dudes, you know, uh, it's, it, and you have a young quarterback. You have a quarterback that was picked number two overall. So do not expect a Super Bowl in year one. Do it. I wouldn't be shocked if it happened, but do not expect a Super Bowl in year one. Let me know what you guys think about what you've done. Let me know if you guys wanted a particular player before you draft. You guys drafted one of these guys that we talked about. Let me know in the comments. And once again, Ben Sanat, I'm saying it right here right now. He's going to be a fucking dog. Like, comment, and subscribe.